Well, what's up, nerds? Welcome to another fireside chat here on Nerds Gone Rogue. This is NGR Radio. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Gehrig, and Moose. This is our first fireside chat together. Yeah, man. This is uh, going to be a good time. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is exciting. Uh, I missed I missed the last fireside chat, but that was because you and Matt did it. But yeah, yeah, it's cool though. That guy, he's a character. He is a character. He's uh, I think he's stuck at work right now because he's yeah. ugly. Yeah, it's the only reason he's stuck at work. And he has forty seven um, different jobs. Yeah, which is sad. Yeah, but um, okay. he'll be back soon though. Yeah. Next next couple weeks, maybe a yeah. month. So yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. So. What happened to your head, Moose? I got attacked by my cat this morning at like four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say attacked, but so like the head of our bed is in the corner of our bedroom and it's like two windows and then one window on the side. And so she likes we built her a little cat stand to sit on to hang out and so she loves that she stopped laying in the bed and being all up on the bed and it makes me sneeze because i'm allergic to cats i'd rather just throw out the window and be like go have fun <laughs> with life but you know i'm, I'm not cruel um, i actually like the cat i, I just say that because i like to talk shit about cats but anyway so she was laying in between the pillows you know my wife and my pillow and uh just you know, I was all right with that. I, I like, kind of turned, rolled over and saw her and was just like, fuck it, I'm not going to, like, because if I throw her down off the bed, she'll just be up there as soon as she knows I'm not moving. Right. So, uh, I'm just laying there, and all of a sudden, I just hear, like, her feet, like, flurrying on the, on the sheets, on the mattress, and then all of a sudden, just, boom, sharp pain in my forehead, and she just, like, dove off the bed. I'm like, what the heck? So I, I got up, I walk into the bathroom. I'm like, holy crap, she like nailed me. I mean, like it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty bad. And so <laughs> like I, I stuck like toilet paper to it for two minutes and I'm sitting there, I'm like, uh, it's four o'clock in the morning. I, or like, yeah, four o'clock. I was like, I gotta be up 45 minutes. I just want to catch some more sleep. So I went back to, I was like, screw it. If I bleed on my pillowcase, I'll just wash it. So I went back to bed and, when I got up, it was like all clotted and stuff. So I was like, I cleaned it up with a little more water to take away, like, cause it was like big scabs. And I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't go to work like that. <laughs> I mean, like, but they did. People did ask me what happened. I was like, the evil cat struck. Oh man, that's funny. Our cat, our cat's too lazy to do that. <laughs> she, uh, no, I mean, she tried yesterday, last night. She tried to jump up on the couch. I was playing some Iron Banner, and she tried to jump up on the couch. Mm -hmm. And right. she tried twice and she fell twice and then she just gave up. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, yeah, okay. Well, anyways, what have you been playing, Moose? What did you play this week? Anything? Anything good? Uh, Bloodborne. I found Matt, I guess Matt had some free time. So the two of us played some Bloodborne together. Nice. Um, he's working a new character and I actually mo moved my, so I moved my main character in a new game plus plus. So my third playthrough with her. And then so, so like I have a save file in the cloud and then I have a save file on a USB. So the save file on the USB I keep, which has like everything unlocked. So if like anyone needs help, I move it over, hop on that character and I just go in and, you know, help the person. And then the, the save in the clouds, the progression of all my, all my characters. Well, I screwed up the save somehow, and I was past ROM, which is like three, four bosses from the end of uh, New Game Plus Plus, and I screwed it up. And so I was like, well, I'll just start all over again. And I guess he thought I meant I was starting like a new character. So I guess he, start, he started a new character to play with. So he was playing, and then I, I think it was like Sunday? I want to say it was Sunday. My wife went to the mountains and she's just like, you can just hang out here. And so I was like, okay, I'll make chili for us. So I made dinner for us. So we'd have lunches for the week. And um, so he was on. So I had a character that was around his level. So I started playing with that character with him. And then um, 
uh, we were just rolling on that for a while. So I've been playing that. I haven't touched Destiny in a while. Like I was just on and just in a party with Justin Doss, and he's like, Did "You do your milestones for the week," and I'm like, "Dude, I don't give a fuck about milestones yet." I said, "I will." I said, "Just not yet." I'm like, I'm like, eh. I'm like, I don't know. So I'm just like, I gotta start. I really gotta start diving it back into that game and playing and getting my character up to level. I think I'm like 240 light power an hour or something like that. So nice, nice. I need, yeah. to, get, I need to get up there. I've been uh, I've been trying to mess around in Destiny with some different builds. I've been trying to like. I, I've been wanting to main the Warlock for a while, but in Destiny 1, the Warlock was kind of like, I don't want to say it was the worst, but it was like the least viable. Like, it, mm-hmm. and the only thing that was really worth using as a Warlock was uh, Self-Res. They had this uh, super ability where you could, if you died, you could resurrect yourself. Oh. And so they changed it in Destiny 2 where they, they have that healing pool instead. Uh, which I like. I thoroughly yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, so like, and and I've I've made a Titan through Destiny One up until this week. I have made a Titan. I love the Titan. Uh, and then I I was messing around with some of the t- the supers in the Titan, and they all feel so samey, and they don't do enough. Like they don't feel as powerful as they did in Destiny One. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just I don't know. It's they rework some of the stuff that I just don't really care for. And like not that the Titan's bad. But I've been playing a lot with my Warlock w- lately to the point where, like, I've played all week on my Warlock. And I haven't even touched my Titan in about two weeks. Yeah. And so I'm like, I was talking to my one friend who is probably the best Destiny PvP player I've ever seen. And he was like, you should just use a Warlock because when we're raiding and stuff, and I just got the boots that uh, during the raid, the final encounter would really help where, like, it it automatically, if you drop your healing pool, mm. but you have the weapon one on, like, it boosts everybody's weapons, and you have these boots on, as soon as everybody's clip runs out, and they're in this pool, it'll automatically reload without the reload animation. Nice. So I just got those, and he's like, yeah, you should just play as the Warlock. So I've been playing as the Warlock all week in Iron Banner, and I'm I'm really enjoying the Warlock. I well, That's good. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. I I'm really frustrated with Iron Banner though. I've I've been playing all week and I haven't even I haven't gotten a single pair of boots to drop for my warlock, and it's the only thing I need. It's the only thing I have left. I've gotten Stupid. I've gotten like eight or nine auto rifles, which I like the auto rifle, but I don't See, need I the, love one. the auto. I love the auto rifle. Yeah, like I, I, I like the pulse one too. Those are my favorite weapons. So. Yeah. I'm more of a, a scout rifle guy, but I already have the two scout rifles that I want to use. So okay. I've been trying to mess around with some auto rifles. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you get a chance, you, or if you find one, you need to keep Uriel's gift. Uh, it's a it's an energy auto rifle. It's it's really good. It's it's uh, got it's got good range. Uh, but anyways, like I've been I've been playing Iron Banner, and it's just really frustrating. There's a lot of things about Destiny Two that are like little things that are really frustrating that they changed from Destiny One that they didn't really need to change. Are you finding it more frustrating than Destiny? So you're finding it more frustrating than Destiny One. Uh, mm-hmm. In some aspects, like I think Destiny Two overall is a better game mm-hmm. for getting new people in and you know more PVE stuff. But when it comes to the PVP stuff, moving it from six v six to four v four really hurt this game and i've heard that from multiple people especially because you gotta like all four people need to be firing on all cylinders yeah plus it's like it's all about team shooting instead of Mm -hmm. in destiny one it was pretty much a skill game where yeah if you could you could pretty much do a 1v2 and you had a chance to win whereas i feel like if you do 1v1 you're trading kills and if there's more than one person there you're running away and you need to be traveling in at least teams of two or three or whatever. And I don't know, man. And the time to kill is longer than Destiny 1. Uh, take It takes way more shots. And headshots feel like they don't do more damage than body shots. I don't know. There's just a lot of weird changes that they made that it's making it easier for people to jump in and just like kind of screw around and do whatever. But at the same time, it's like, 
I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, but it, I I really do like the Warlock, and I like the auto rifle I got from Iron Banner, and uh, I like a, I like the way the Iron Banner stuff looks. It's all based on like samurai armor, mm-hmm. so uh, it's really cool. But I don't know. I've I've found myself in that place for Destiny that I think you know I'm gonna it's it's time to stop playing it every day, right? And so, like, I, I'll come back for Iron Banner. I'll, I'll go back through the raids, and I'll do my milestones, which take, like, maybe an hour to do uh, one day a week. But, like, I'm already finding myself thinking I've kind of done everything already. And, I mean, next week's the Prestige raid, but, I mean, we'll probably only run that once, you know? It's so. Uh, but, yeah, that's kind of what I've been playing. I've also been playing this uh, Super Nintendo Classic. Uh, nice. I've been, playing, I've been playing a lot of the games on this. So, uh, well, Zelda, cool. Super Metroid, Mario World. Like, I've, I'm trying to work my way up to the RPG stuff. <laughs> like, I've never played Final Fantasy 3, so I wanna pl- I'm want to. working my way up to play that and Super Mario RPG, so. Those will be fun. Those will yeah. Be fun. yeah. I've heard good things about both. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Did I, play? I was playing something else earlier. Uh, I I can't remember. I'll bring it up if I figure it out. But you need oh. to go back and finish your platinum for Horizon. Oh, wait, did you? I did you? I got the platinum in Horizon. Oh, you did. That's right. That's right. My bad. I forgot. Yeah. About that. Yeah. I need to finish. I need to finish uh, Hellblade though. <laughs> but oh, Bloodborne. I, I revisited Halo Five. Uh, multiplayer because every time destiny comes out like a new expansion or something it always makes me want to go back and play halo for some reason yeah because you want to play a real bungee shooter <laughs> but uh yeah that was a shot at bungee not yeah i know not destiny <laughs> I know. Uh, but well that's the thing with destiny if it, like destiny 2 feels a lot like halo 3 did well, like, hey, Destiny dude, feels really good. I, I agreed. Uh, Jeff stated on uh, Nerdscom Platinum, or maybe in our chat, that he lo- he loves the the gunplay of it, and like it does feel really good when you get headshots or something. Like I like I said, I like using the auto rifle. Like mm-hmm. when you can line up the headshots or like you know be uh, putting a couple bullets in their body and then moving the you know moving your rifle up to take some headshots. It's it's very satisfying when they finally hit, or you know, there's there's some tight. The controls are really tight, so mm-hmm. it's 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 a lot of fun to play the game. Like, yeah, if you like shooters. Yeah, so. I mean, Destiny feels great to play. I just feel like I didn't play the game. It was meant the game how it was meant to be played. Like, oh, there's adventures to do in between all these missions, so go do those, or yeah. you know, join a public event if you're in the middle of a mission or whatever. Like. We just we found the fastest way to level up, and we leveled up. And <laughs> now it's kind of worthless to do all these other side things because the rewards aren't there for us because we didn't play it the right way. Well, uh, have you started a new character yet? Yeah, I've, I have all yeah. three characters above three hundred. Same, yeah, same. But here's the thing: like after you get your first character leveled up, yeah. it's really easy. Like from from the starting the campaign with a second character. To leveling it up to at least 290 took me six hours. Wow. Because I, like, all my weapons from my first character were leveled up all the way. So I just transferred the weapons over to my second character. And so all the drops I was getting were 265, 270, 275. Like, they're all dropping at higher light levels. So as soon as I got my armor, I could just keep infusing. And then, you know, two weeks of milestones got me up got me up there so yeah um but yeah i don't know man i i am enjoying it but it's something is just off did they just drop something too like they like they put out a special mode or something for halo they were doing like a special event (laughs) oh for halo uh Halo five i could have swore they were doing something recently they put out a they put out uh like like double xp weekend or something because it's Uh, okay or maybe it was Triple XP weekend because it's the third year of Halo Five or something, and uh, they're they're getting ready to drop some new stuff for Xbox One X when it launches. Uh, yeah. Which, by the way, I have questions for us to answer on this fireside chat. Okay. 
Um, I do want to. I do want to point out, like it, it. It's sad that it's like the third year of that game, and it's not talked about as much as I feel previous Halos were talked about. Mm-hmm. And again, <clears throat> it's a completely different team doing the Halo game than Bungie. Number one and number two. I think that affects players in that and i think they pushed the cycle up like they didn't launch as soon as they did previously like halo one there's a wider gap between halo one and two than there was between four and five and so uh people well, really there's there's been three years between each of the mainline halo games really okay yeah. well, then i stand uh, corrected maybe mm-hmm. maybe it was like four years in between halo two and three i could see that it did seem a little bit longer between two and three. Like and they then, made people wait an extra year or something. Yeah, and then you know? they did a ton of weird stuff in between Halo Three and uh, Halo Four. Like, like uh, what was it? Like two years after Halo Three, they or a year after Halo Three, they did ODST, and then right. a year after ODST, they did Reach, which was. Bungie's last Halo game. And then- okay, so Halo 1 was 2001, 2 was 2004, uh, 3 was 2007, so it was only three, it was still three years. And then they did Halo Wars and Halo 3 ODST was 2009. So it was five years between Halo 3 and Halo 4, but they had Reach at 2010 which was uh, three years. So and then Halo 4, yeah, it was three years from Halo 4 to 5. So, yeah. So they, they, they the big gap was between Halo 3 and Halo 4 because of, I, uh, I think they had, the, I think Reach was the last one Bungie did, and then right. and they had to get a new team in. And I guess since Bungie was going out, they needed to take a little more time, which sounds, you know, practical. And so they did reach, and then they were like, "All right, two years later, we'll do, you know, Halo 4. Right. Which I thought was still a good game. Yeah, still a good game. I still, I still think Halo Four might be the best Halo, like in terms of feel, because it felt like three, but they gave you the sprint, which made it feel more modern. It still felt like Halo. I don't and know. It, I, it wasn't aim down your sights like L two as well. Uh, for certain weapons, there is aim down sights, like the battle rifle and the DMR. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm just saying because, like, usually it's freaking, it was pushing in the, the, uh, L3 button, wasn't it? Or the R3 button, whatever the, the, you had to push that yeah. in to aim. And it's just like, right. are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. You know, why, why can't you just mix, like, logical controls? Right. I don't need your controls to be the same as anybody, everybody else, but just make them logical, you know? Right. Like, yeah, I just I don't know, man. And like I've been playing I've been playing Halo Five multiplayer a little bit just because some of my friends have recently picked up Halo Five because it's either they've gotten Game Pass or they mm-hmm. uh, you know found it cheap somewhere. So like playing multiplayer in Halo Five, Halo Five is probably the best best feeling shooter I think I've ever played. Like it feels fast, aimed out mm-hmm. sights feels good. Uh, the wet the fep- the weapons feel tight and the controls feel tight. Like the campaign, like the story sucks, but the campaign is good. If that makes sense, like the level yeah. design at least is awesome. Yeah, like, the co op is fun. Like I don't know, man. I I think a lot of people missed out on Halo Five just because of their for some reason they don't like non Bungie Halo games, and that's just sad because like half of three four three is made up of ex bungee employees because they kept wanting to make Halo and yeah. didn't want to move on to Destiny. So yeah. I don't know. It's it's weird that these games feel so similar, but the way Halo went and the way the Destiny went, just it I don't know. It feels similar but different at the same time. Uh, but Halo Five is is really good and it's sad that like I think in terms of sales, it's the lowest selling game since Halo One. Five? I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, I think, it, I think you're it's, right. I mean, it's still sold like six million copies, but still, like, I think Halo Three sold thirteen or fourteen million copies, and Halo Four sold ten or eleven million. Uh, and granted, like the Xbox One doesn't have as has the doesn't have the install base of of 
Xbox 360, but I don't know, man. Halo's good, and I've been I've revisited Gears of War 4 also, and Gears still feels really good. Nice. I just I don't know what it is, but like just I always feel like, man, Xbox's franchises are so tired and they're so played out. But then when you revisit the games, you realize like, oh man, this is why they're still doing it because it still feels really good to play. And mm-hmm. I don't know. We have we have questions about the Xbox One, uh, but we'll we'll save them for a little bit later. But I just I don't know what they can do, man, to revitalize these franchises because they still feel really good to play. It's just like when you go back to Gears. Yeah, Gears feels really good, and the new weapons feel good. But like, mm-hmm. how do you iterate on that? How do you iterate on something that already feels really good? And that's the problem people are having with Forza 7 now. Is like, yeah, Forza, Forza is a really, really great game, but it's been a great game for, you know, five or six entries at this point. Yeah. So how do you iterate on that? You know? It's just... You start man. removing features like Madden. Changing don't, things up. Don't get me started on Madden. Man. I, I, you asked! And I, I know. <laughs> and I said that's how you make it feel. Good. I know, but dude, man, <laughs> we were just talking about this at work two days ago about Madden, about how like we've all stopped Madden, and we just want we just want them to port PS2 versions of Madden, right? Right. Because like every time I play Madden or sports games in general, like it, especially EA sports games, except for FIFA, like I bu- I bought the most recent version of FIFA, and FIFA feels really good to play. But in terms of like Madden or or NHL or NBA Live, like, and yeah, I don't know why you're buying NBA Live when 2K is out there. But like, ever since it launched on 360, I always felt like I was trying to predict where my guy would go and tried to base my movements based on where you thought he was going to end up instead of actually like, oh, I want to sprint to the right, so my character is going to or my player is going to sprint to the right. Or I'm going to hit this hole and I'm going to juke this guy. Like the PS2 controls felt so good and so clean. Yeah, yeah they and were. Ever since then, it's like, why am I predicting where my guy is going? Why can't I just press Y and it's thrown to the guy at Y? Like, you know, either you hold Y for like a, a fire pass and it gets knocked down, or you lob it and it gets intercepted. There's no like happy in between like throw or or like the running feels weird it's just uh, man you're killing me man i would buy madden every year if your controls were just fixed what i think it would be cool if they i'm not 100 percent sure on this but i'm probably it's probably the former more than the latter it'd be i think M, uh mlb the show their retro game mode i wish it would go back with controls but I think it just does um, it just does the graphics. So the game still plays the same, but like the graphics go back to the old school like style, like you know, like it, 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 and that's awesome. Like I don't need the graphics to go retro, but just let me have retro controls. Right. Where like I can just play retro. And I, and I, we've talked about this on on the last that last episode where it's just like just like you said, I'm gonna push Y and it's gonna throw to Y. Let the game should be smart enough. To figure it out, you know what I mean. Like, the, like you know, the game can look like, down the field and say, "Okay, if I throw it up high into the right, he could, he could he could beat him." Throw it, you know. I hit right. Y, it goes to that receiver, but it goes high into the right, you know, to the outside, and then mm-hmm. that receiver can look back and say, "Okay, here's where it's coming," and make the adjustment. And all you gotta do is catch it and run with it. Right, like like you said, the game should be smart enough, depending on the play you pick and the route the the receiver's running. It should just know, like, okay, this is how hard to throw the ball, and this is where the ball should be thrown. And, right. like, then the the defense can react to how, like, the stats of the quarterback, like, okay, so maybe this quarterback can't throw super hard, so maybe the, the defender can slap it down a couple times or whatever. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't need – I don't need – baby mode like i don't need it to hold my hand right, like one right, right right but i don't need these like hardcore controls either you know i'm yeah like i have stuff to do man i don't have time to be master madden okay i've got destiny raids to do yeah but i mean like i i would i would love to just play madden and just play in my franchise mode and just okay this is this is how i want my team these are the buttons i want to use this is like like i don't i don't even like right trigger i want eight i want 
X to be Sprint again. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. It's just I want I want PS2 Madden back, but like I don't even care if it looks great. I just want PS2 Madden back. Yeah, Madden PS2 HD. Please, that would be awesome if they could do a remake. Maybe we'll get maybe we'll get uh, Madden 2004 as a PS2 classic or something. <laughs> oh god, that would be amazing if they oh, brought god. this back. That'd be awesome. As a PS2 on PS4 classic. Oh, man, that'd be that awesome. would be awesome. Yeah, God, I played the hell out of those. Yeah, I love. And then they had the instant replay, like they in PS2, they like introduced the instant replay, and I had one. I stay as an Eagles fan. I hated Jason Seahorn, and I had a game Jeez. where like I was running, like I I used to run a play where that the halfback would run out to the left, and I just toss it to him, and he if if it was done right at the right time. In my play calling, he could just take off for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And so Jason Seahorn was coming across the field to tackle my guy, and I he just stiff-armed him and, like, threw him to the ground and kept going, broke his jaw. <laughs> he, was, he was out for, like, four weeks, and I'm like, that's the best ever. So, like, during the game, I just sat there and watched that replay over and over, just watched it. like Because I think at that time you could go back for the replay on like the last play, because like they it's it, it came across the bottom that he was like out with a broken jaw or some shit like that, and I was just like, that's amazing. Yeah, so. it was funny though, because like all <laughs> those injuries were like <laughs> they were so over the top, but then like like the guy could like break his leg and he'd only be out for like two weeks, or <laughs> then then somebody could like sprain their thumb and be out for the season. And you're yeah. like, it doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, guys? Tiburon, I tell you. I know. I just, I always remember, like, okay, I'm going to play as the Browns and I'm just going to run the ball because they can, the quarterbacks always suck. And I would never, I would never throw the ball. I would, I would literally trade all my best receivers and quarterback away for an offensive line and a running back. Now, see, see, like, I used to, because I used to play as McNabb and ow, even that cat just attacked my hand. Um, it, it, uh, even like he wasn't a he was an awesome quarterback, but you could always make him better. So like mm-hmm. I always felt, no matter what team you picked, no matter what quarterback you had, the skill, you know, the the play call, your play calling, and picking who to really throw it to as the player could make that quarterback better. You know what I mean? Like you could get them to a ninety nine rating because mm-hmm. I play like two or three seasons each year, and my quarterback would be at least a ninety nine ranking by the end. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, but I love passing. I, I sometimes I'd throw, sometimes I'd throw. Like I, I'd sometimes like flip a coin and be like, "All right, this game I'm gonna run. I'm gonna do nothing. Mm-hmm. I'll throw a couple passes to keep them guessing, but I'm definitely gonna have more running yards than I am throwing. You know, throwing touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. yeah I always like. I always needed the, the quarterback, not like a fast quarterback, not like Michael Vick fast, but you know, somewhere in the like low 70s speed range because i always like to i always like to roll out and like throw there's this tight end like this tight end crossing route that i would always throw the tight end or like if they would bite on the tight end there was always a receiver running straight down the field that i could throw to uh but like i would always do that and i don't know man i just i just really miss it i really miss it (laughs) and sometimes like like what two years ago Madden 16 was the last Madden I bought. I, I, I skip years because I don't have time to buy Madden every year anymore. And yeah. not that I want to because the control stuff. But I wanted to play football because it had been a while. So I was like, okay. I bought it right after the Super Bowl because it was like 8 bucks or something yeah. uh, for a Super Bowl sale. And so I was playing it. I was like, okay. Okay, some of those games actually just popped up in my timeline because I shared some of the awesome defensive plays I made. Uh, but... Like I don't know. Like I, I would, I would be rolling out to the to the uh, right, and I would literally set up to throw the ball, mm-hmm. and my quarterback would like turn around in a circle and lob the ball out of bounds. I'm like, you're literally standing still. Why would you? Why would you like <laughs> turn around and th- lob the ball out of bounds when I'm clearly hitting B because the receiver's open? Like you're yeah. literally just standing still, and then he, I don't know. 
I'm like, I mean, it's it, it would almost be better if all the players just did the weird T pose that they did in NBA Live that one year. Like, yeah. man. <laughs> like, I, I want to like Madden, man. It's just fix fix it. Now, the guy I like, I got no problem with Coach Madden. It's just his game. Oh, yeah. It's the that game. has his name on it. Needs right. a little bit of help. Right. Right. Well, now yeah, he's got that Star Wars money, so who knows how much effort they're going to be putting in the Madden. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. <sighs> well, I, it's still it's still a franchise that makes them a lot of money, like FIFA. I know. I mean, I mean, those are their two sports franchises: FIFA and Madden. I know. You know? I know. And so. FIFA's FIFA's really good. Like, I got the Switch version, and I know the reviews aren't great for the Switch version, but it's got all the modes I I need in it. So. Scott. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's the, the the ratings come down because it doesn't have what everything else has. It doesn't like there's no option it, to there's no option to play with your friends, but that's because it's not the game's fault that the that the Switch has a crappy friend code right. system. Like, yeah, like, none of the games allow you to play with your friends. Like, I can't I can't play with anybody except unless I download the freaking app and you know keep my phone on to party up in Splatoon or something. So, like, I don't even care about that stuff. Like, I don't have a Nintendo console to play multiplayer games anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else is it? It doesn't have... Spe- what? I was going to say, speaking of, like, you know, we're talking about games and whatnot. So, just a quick side note. We went and watched... I went and watched the Eagles game last night with my brothers and my dad at a cigar bar. Had beers. And, but there's an app out there called Tunity, T-U-N-I-T-Y. And you download it, you create a free account, log in, and then so like we were in the bar, and they were pl- the sound is was linked to the TV at the other side of the bar. We were sitting in a lounge area, and they were playing the Cubs game, so there was no eagle sound, and she couldn't put the eagle sound on. But you hold the phone up to the TV, it scans the TV, and it'll play the sound through your phone. So oh, like if you're at a bar. Like, if you're ever at a, well, you'll probably never have to, you know, you're at a bar, they'll probably be playing Cleveland, you know, all the time. So, but. No, dude, they don't even play Cleveland sports anymore, man. Like, the Browns game last, (laughs) the Browns game last week was blacked out. Dang. Because they're so bad. Oh, so, like, if you want, if you're watching, like, four TVs and the volumes for, like, one of them and you want to hear the other one, all you do is hold up the app and sit there and you can listen to it. So, I just sat there on the couch for, you know recline you know with the with the phone on my shoulder just listening in my left ear and it it was pretty good like it was maybe like a second delay but it was faster than the closed caption because they had closed caption on for us but it was faster than that so i was like i'll take it you know so it's actually it's it's pretty cool i can't wait to try it out on some other games when i'm out nice. and about because nice. but anyways anyways you were yeah. saying like the like you have to download the app to to play with your friends and yeah. Did, what just, about what about playing with the little joy the little little joy cons no, you know, while you're sitting dude, in I, front of I have, like couch co op? No, dude, I bought two pro controllers. I I don't have I don't have time for taking stuff off the screen. Like <laughs> I have I have two sets of joy cons for arms, but like okay. every time I played arms with somebody, we've always just used the pro controller. Like. Which, by the way, ARMS is probably one of the most underrated games for Switch right now. It's like, it's, I think it's Nintendo's Overwatch, where, like, the characters are cool, and they have really cool backstories and stuff, and they're actually putting out a comic and making some short, like, video shorts, similar to what Overwatch does for these characters. It's pretty smart. Yeah, I mean, I I knew they were going to do this. I was like, you're dumb if you don't steal that from Overwatch, like... This is a care. This is like this is their Overwatch, you know. So like, you know, arms arms is pretty good, but like using the pro controller instead of those Joy Cons, man. I just, <laughs> man, <laughs> it's just it's just bad, man. I just, yeah, that app is is bad. So like playing stuff with friends on Switch is just bad. But going back to FIFA, like it had it doesn't have the the whatever the story mode is. Hmm. Uh, it has the ultimate team. But now, oh, one second, can you still create like a new character and like they progress and get better? Like you might not get the story mode of it, but you at least get like you can you can create yourself as a character and like 
start him out as a rookie because I think Matt Matt did that in freaking you know on the PS2 Madden. You can create your own self. Right. Like I'd create myself as a quarterback and start I, out as a rookie and just like progress. Like, can you do I know that you can, at least? I know you can create players and put mm-hmm. them on specific teams, but I don't know if it has like my player mode where you play like you know, like an MLB. You yeah. have like the show. You have like the the become a star mode or whatever, and you just yeah. play the parts that your player is in. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Okay. I don't know if the Switch version that has that. I haven't even. I haven't really looked, but I know you can create players and put them on team because I created myself. Uh, okay. But I don't know. But it it has the FIFA Ultimate Team on it, but it's different. It somehow it's different than the one that's on Xbox One and PS4. Uh, but I mean, it plays well and it has Dynasty mode, so like it's fine for me. Uh, nice. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, you wanna you wanna answer some of these questions? Sure. We never we never get to answer questions on here. Uh, I know Matt's always jabber John. I know. Jeez, Matt. <laughs> That's why we get to answer questions when Matt's not here. Uh, That's right. Okay. So if you wanna give us a topic or questions, you can email the show at ngrradiopodcast at gmail dot com. Uh, Moose and I will answer your questions when Matt's not here. Take us <laughs> off on whatever new song has come out on vinyl or whatever. So, all right, Moose, this one's actually directed specifically for you. Oh, I'm sure it is. Uh, longtime fan of our content on Twitter at CodFanFF asks, "Ask Moose what would get him to buy an Xbox One." First, like, legit first-party support from Microsoft. It has to be, it, it can't be, it can't be the three. They need something, they need something more than Halo, Gears, Forza, Halo, Gears, Forza, Halo, Gears, Forza. Like, I'm, like no. Like, I, I'm tired of that. Uh, I'm not saying that they're horrible games. I enjoyed, the last Halo, I, I'll be honest, the last Halo I played was four. Never touched five. So I can't speak to that game, but I thoroughly enjoyed four. Loved three, loved two, loved one. Um, Gears of War. The last one I played to completion was two. I tried. I bought three and tried to beat it, but I just I I lo- that, I think that's when I lost my interest. Mm-hmm. Like, and four was give was bought for me for, as a Christmas present. So I was like, well, I'll play it. So I started playing it and got really got into it. Um, but uh, I just. And I'm not really that big into racing games. Last racing game I legit played was probably Crash Team Racing, which is not even legit, but Ridge Racer 4 on the PlayStation. That oh, was like geez. the last one that I... Yeah, so I just... I'm like, eh, whatever. So I think the last I think the last racing game I played besides Mario Kart was... I, I, got, Forza, I got really into Forza 3 for 360 for some reason. Mm-hmm. And then I haven't bought... I haven't bought a single... Forza game since and like the dumb thing is like I'm not into racing games that I need to buy them every year and mm-hmm. I was I was seriously considering buying Forza 7 yeah. but then the month before the month before Forza 7 comes out Forza 5 is free on games of gold with all the expansions and all the extra cars I'm like oh, I don't need I'm not spending 60 bucks on yeah, 7 when I, buy five, when I have 5 for free yeah you get 5 for free and so that would have to happen and then Microsoft has a problem. This is why I think they fail with their first part, a lot of their first party games, or a lot of the like uh, Sunset Overdrive fails, um, games like that. And uh, what was the latest one? Um, uh, Cuphead, Quantum no, Break. No, I was Quantum thinking Quantum Break. Break that, that, although, do they own? They don't own. That's Remedy. They don't own Remedy. They just had a they don't own remedy contract with them, right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was just, that was a similar yeah. situation. Yeah. So the problem the problem is they don't know how to cultivate like first party IPs. I really think they caught lightning in a bottle three times in a row, and that's mm-hmm. it. Like they've never, you know, they've done a they've done a good job. Like Indies used to be awesome on three hundred and sixty, yeah. and then they kept. 
they're, you know, oh, well, you got to pay a shit ton of money to get certification. Then if you're, if you fail that or you, or, or not even that you pass certification, but you have to make, you have to fix a patch. You have to pay so much money for the patch and like all this stuff. And, and Sony is like, well, if you just like work with us, you know, we'll, you know, we'll work out some kind of deal. We'll pay for that. And then you just give us the money as the, the game's, you know, making money. And then once you break even on what you owe us, the rest is yours, you know, or whatever. And now, now my, I know Microsoft has turned around on that stance and has, you know, 360'd it and decided that it's in their best interest and gamers' best interest. Not necessarily gamers' best interest, just their best interest. So they're making it look like it's in gamers' best interest to, to waive all that so that indies come out on the Xbox One. But um, just doing a better job of letting... Because I, I feel like Microsoft's problem is if the game doesn't make the most amount of money, uh, it's a failure or they're not going to support it. Like I, I, I think that's what happened with Scalebound. I think they were seeing that Scalebound might, or not, might not have been the greatest game ever, but it still could have made them money, but it wasn't going to make them the most money in the world. So they just canceled it, mm-hmm. you know? And then I, was, I, I posted a picture in one of my game groups recently. I was at a um, Walmart. I think it was not. It was last Friday because I had so much time to burn till places open for me to go clean the taps, and uh, I saw Sunset Overdrive for like nine bucks. Yeah, and it's it's like you know that that is why you know it's like this is why no you know first party like if you want to kill a first party IP or if you want to kill a really good IP, put it on put it, make it exclusive to Xbox, except obviously for Cuphead. Yeah, I mean, Cuphead is tearing up. Yeah, but up. it's also on Steam. It's also on Steam. Yeah, I think. In fact, I think there's more sales. Obviously, there's more sales on on Steam than there are on uh, Xbox One. Yeah. But then I wonder. I'd like to have a conversation, like just behind closed doors, that never leaves that room with the developers of that game, and be like, "How much do how you much wish you could go? Microsoft? No, how much do you wish you could go back and not sign on with MS? You know, Microsoft." Yeah, and be able to put it on Switch, to be able to put it on PlayStation Four. Well, there's talk. You know, supposedly there's there. Microsoft is considering releasing like their smaller games that they publish on other platforms. Really? Yeah, like Cuphead is like the first one that's really brought it up. I read an article on what was it? I forget where it was. Might have been like something like Forbes or something, where Mm -hmm. like. Like, a lot of people are like, man, we really want this on Switch. We really want this on Switch. And people asked Microsoft, like, it was a Microsoft representative with the producer of Cuphead. And they said, right, they just said right now, it's an Xbox One console exclusive right now. And on Windows 10 and Steam, uh, but it's not out of the question. Because they want to consider it like so, some of their like quote unquote smaller games like Minecraft, obviously owned by Microsoft. Yeah. Not that it wasn't on other platforms before, but Microsoft is still yeah. still like really pushing it on the on the other platforms. Like they want to start doing stuff like that with their smaller IP, and which you know I was having a conversation with someone about uh, like a, a potential Nintendo sixty four classic. Because what are you going to put on that thing besides the two Zelda games and Mario and Smash Brothers? Because everything is owned by Rare. Yeah, for sure. And like, you know, Microsoft, if Nintendo needs to make a deal with Microsoft to get those Rare games on there, which, you know, I would love to see Perfect Dark and Banjo-Kazooie on there, you know? But, yeah. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I hope they don't make a, a mini Nintendo classic. Or, I mean, uh, N64. Don't. Just don't. The graphics were horrible. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that'd be like the only thing that was really good about it. It's just like the PlayStation. That, those were ugly consoles yeah. of, that, of that era of gaming, except, except when both of them were doing like sprite based games. Like sprite based games were beautiful on both. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, but they're so rare because everything they like sprite based games on those consoles were so rare because yeah. like everybody wanted three D. Everybody thought three D was amazing and like that's that's why I think stuff like 
Castlevania still holds up today is because like of the, of the sprite based stuff or yeah, the, the later the later Mega Man X games like I think what four and five were on PlayStation like those games still hold up because <laughs> you know yeah, the sprite based and that's and now, why this, the stuff on Super Nintendo looks so good and you go back and play Star Fox and Star Fox Two and it's like wow these are these are awful <laughs> yeah I mean and, and you look at you know. It's not necessarily recent, but the the whole pixel artwork like uh, revival, you know, it's also a way to have games look that way. You know, it's all the it's the nostalgia. It's the nostalgia of playing a Super Nintendo game again, but they're able to infuse it with like today's processing powers to have new mechanics in the games that you couldn't have before. You know, and so I think that's what's really cool. Uh, but yeah, so th- those would be that would be awesome if Cuphead came to to other stuff. I could see him doing it where it's like a year or two out. You know right. what I mean? Like after a year or two, just be like, okay, we've made as much money as we can on this. Let's put it on something else and have a resurgence in our sales. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah. I could, see, I would, I would see it coming to Nintendo before it would come to uh, PS4, just because. Um, that's direct competition. Like Nintendo is not really direct competition. Yeah, Nintendo is not direct competition. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. And plus, it's almost. I know Reggie calls it a home console, a home console, but it that thing is a mobile console. That's not a home console. I've probably played my Switch in TV mode out of <laughs> probably the three or four hundred hours I've played of it. <laughs> like I've probably played it on the TV maybe six or seven hours yeah and that's see. and like i'll probably play mario uh, when it comes out on on the tv just for a little bit but like for zelda for zelda i put in 210 hours of zelda i play i played the final boss in handheld mode or on tv mode and i played maybe the first like three or four hours in tv mode everything mm-hmm. else was done in handheld mode because yeah if i i'm, I'm if I'm gonna play something on TV, I'm good. I'm like I I love Nintendo just as much as the next guy. But if I'm gonna play something on my TV, I want it to look the best it possibly can. And Zelda, even though Zelda's a pretty game, like when you put it on TV mode, you can see the flaws in the graphics and the under like how underpowered the Switch is. Not that Zelda isn't a beautiful game because it is, but like if you compare Zelda to Horizon or you know, something, something else that Sony's put out, like, it just, there's no question about the technical fidelity of the other yeah. consoles compared to Switch. So, like, mm-hmm. that's why I like playing handheld mode, because on that small screen, everything looks better and cleaner. Yeah, you don't notice it. Yeah. yeah. And, like, you know, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, Nintendo's art direction and everything doesn't require a ton of power. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, and we've had this conversation a million times, so I'm not really going to go into like the third party support and why I can't run third party games very well. Like, we see that the, the uh, dips in quality for Doom, even though Doom looks great on Switch, it's still going to run at 720p, 30 frames a second on Switch, where you can run it at 4K, 60 frames a second on your PS4 Pro or Xbox One X. Like, you know, that's there's superior ways to play that game on TV. You know. So they're in their whole selling factor and that, and you know, a lot of the people that we game with and chat with, it's on the go. Oh yeah. man, I'll have doom on the go. And that's, that's how they get that sacrifice. And that's how they, you know, it's accepted is it's on the go, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And I mean, Mario plus rabbits, I probably put 20 hours into that game. I haven't played a single thing of it on the TV. Like mm-hmm. I just, there's no need to play it on TV. There's just, I mean, it, I mean, I think the 3DS is going to die after this year, and like this is going to be the the handheld console that people pair with their home console. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. it's just it's like it's just a their marketing is a home console you can take with you. But I think I'm 99.9 percent sure everybody else is doing it the other way around, where it's the handheld console you can plug into your TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's complete opposite. Now, did you see posts where Target has a uh, Mario Odyssey demo? Yeah. So does Best Buy. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's pretty that's pretty badass. I was upset. I 
like I was saying, I had time off Friday. I went into a GameStop. Or not a GameStop. I was like the Walmarts, Best Buys, and Targets and GameStops were supposed to still have, were supposed had Chasm as a playable demo on the PS4s. Mm -hmm. Now it's sad to see that they've updated their demo libraries and removed it. Because it used to be Axiom Verge for a while. You know, it was one of them that was on there, and then the game released and got moved, and then Chasm was on there. And so I didn't get to play that, but I was like, oh, that's cool that they've got Mario on there. Had I known that, I, I, I would have been on the lookout for it. But maybe it was just this week they started putting them on them, you know? Yeah. So, but that's pretty cool. I've heard, I've heard some good things about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I like the new, the new commercial they put out or the new trailer they put out for Mario Odyssey is pretty cool. Like, very <laughs> high production values for a trailer. Like, they did this whole like Broadway musical thing, and it's like mm -hmm. live action mixed with CG Mario, and then they show some gameplay in with it. That's it's like, it's really cool. Like it, if you should you should watch it. It's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's. What were we talking about? What was the original thing we were talking about? Xbox. The we were we were talking about the uh, listener's question. What would what would get me personally the moose to buy a uh, Xbox console? Yeah, okay. that would that would that would be it. Um, but like like I said, yeah, just all all the games that I really want to play are on PS4, or they're coming to PS4 first, and then even third party games. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of the people we game with, they're like, yeah, I want to. No, I'm getting an Xbox One X for my third party games. And it's like like why are you gonna spend that extra money? Okay, so it a lot of people, a lot of the gamers I know out there, some of them are like, I bought an Xbox, you know, at five hundred dollars, then I bought traded it in, bought an Xbox One S. Now they're trading that in, they paid the difference on that. Now they're trading that in to pay the difference. You've bought three consoles this cycle. Hey, guess what? I bought one. And it still yeah. plays all the games that I want to play. Still looks great. And you know what? I'll sacrifice 4K TV. You know what I want? And I had this discussion. Give me freaking better F, uh, frames per second. I don't need resolution. If it's 1080p, but it runs at a solid 60 frames per second. I'm talking like solid 60 frames per second. Yeah. I want like a game that's got a crap ton of chaos going on. But that thing is still smooth as butter. That's what I want. I don't give a crap. Yeah, about like I would, like when I play Halo Five and Gears, like they they look like my TV. My TV eight years ago was like Samsung's like kind of higher tier consumer friendly TV. It was like so yours is as old as mine. Mine's about the same age. Yeah, so. it, it mm -hmm. it's a fifty five inch Samsung, ten AP. It was like fifteen hundred dollars at the time, like. Yeah, like it's it's like it was it's a smart TV. It does all that junk, like whatever. I don't care right. about all that. But like the point is, like I was playing Halo Five and Gears on my Xbox One S, and like those games look fantastic. I don't know how those games could look any better. Like, yeah. but but Gears Four campaign only runs at thirty frames a second, and like. <laughs> If if you could if you could guarantee me that like the X would run the campaign at sixty frames a second and still look as good as it does, it's like yeah, maybe I would consider it. Or like, like give that option, either be four K at like a like a halfway, like maybe forty five or even thirty, or you could say, all right, well we'll let you run at solid sixty at you know ten eighty p. Yeah, that would probably get you to you know you you yeah. you'd say you'd consider it. See, that's the well, thing. At the same time, I'm just like I don't know if I really play my Xbox enough to do that because like most just of my stuff. third no because I still like I still like Gears and I still like Halo like I I still play those I still play Gears a lot I I like Gears of War is probably my favorite competitive franchise like I okay I love playing competitive Gears uh, especially the new mode they added with four called Dodgeball oh it's Ooh. so good cool. It's nice. so good. Dodgeball is like it's five v five. Everybody only has one life, right? Mm -hmm. But when when you kill somebody on the other team, one of your downed members comes back into the fight. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah. That that dodgeball works that way, but that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that that's oh man, that mode is so good. So um, how do you win? Is there a timer or just by killing the whole? Other you team? just kill the other team. Like okay. I'm sure there's a timer too, so that it doesn't run for uh, each each round is like 
four or five minutes, but yeah, usually see, that's cool. Usually that's cool. you could take somebody like, and then it's like a best of four or best of five, I think. Yeah. So you need to win, th- win three rounds to win the match, but uh, that's like uh, that's like an uh, um, the speed of the, I like the speed of the matches. There was one where they did they introduced the mode for um, uh, Titanfall two, where you got like a flag in the center. So it's mm-hmm. like the, whoever if you can whoever holds the flag the longest is the way you can win, or if you completely eliminate the other team and it's one minute, you get one minute. But like oh. the like the you know, like the the arena is like very small, and you you in if you're shot and ki- you're killed, you're you're killed. You don't actually. Maybe you do come back. I can't remember. No, I don't think you come back on that mode. But that that mode's awesome. So that that dodgeball sounds like like it'd be like really cool to be able to tr- bring your you know bring your uh, fallen pl- uh, teammates back into the fight. So yeah, like one time ta- one game I was playing, I was like I was playing the game of my life. I don't even know how I did this good because I I even though I love gears, I suck at it. Like I it, it was well, I love Titanfall too, and I suck at it. But so, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was one on four. They had four guys, and I I was the only team member left. And like you know how a lot of games just post like last last remaining player or whatever <laughs> i yeah. just see that flashing on my screen every like minute or so <laughs> or like 30 seconds or so i'm like crap i'm just i'm sitting behind this this crate like waiting for someone to come up behind me or something one guy comes up to me pull out my shotgun take him out one hit like i'm almost dead but i hit him just square in the face so he died in one hit and i was like if he would have hit me one more time like i would have died yeah but brought a teammate back Another guy sneaks up on me. I melee him and stun him and shoot him with my shotgun. And, like, I take out two players. So now it's three on two. And yeah. then I, I run up to a third guy and just run up behind him and shoot him in the back. And it's all of a sudden it's <laughs> four on one the other way. And I'm yeah. like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> nice. It was awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, it was That's awesome. awesome. But, uh, okay, I think we have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, this will be a quick one, but a uh, longtime listener, Megan Green, asks, you guys are both PlayStation fans. What is one thing that one of the other companies does that PlayStation doesn't that you would want implemented in PlayStation? Do you want to go first? Uh, or do you uh, want to think? Because I, I got one. How about we do one and then one and then one and one? Okay. Okay. So I've got one off the bat. Um, a so I had I would like a faster, more secure network from Sony. That's what I would want. Now Microsoft's got that because they were implementing it. Like Xbox came around, they wanted to do online gaming, and they they did the legwork. Like online gaming was an afterthought for Sony, and it, right. and from my understanding. Uh, it's significantly better than PlayStation 3 because I've never played on the PlayStation 3. But oh, PlayStation 3 was awful. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to say it's better than Xbox Live Arcade, but PSN on the PS4, like playing, like partying up, I feel like it's almost the same exact experience for me as as it was playing on my 360. I can find my friends. I can add them to you know invite them to the party, play. We can jump in games and have fun. So I feel it's a comparable experience. I'm not saying exactly the same, but the differences to me are negligible. I want I want a better a better uh, PSN from them for like stores. So like yesterday, um, if y'all didn't know, Devolver Digital's got a sale going on there, an indie publisher, and I was going to try and buy Mother Russia Bleeds because it's like 60% off and the game is awesome. It's like Double Dragon to the extreme. And so like the store was just like, cannot complete your transaction. Please see previous transaction history. And I'm like, uh, okay. So I Googled the issue and like a hundred, like people are just having the same issue and they can't get it fixed. So then I'm like, okay, well that's fine. So then like later in the day, I'm checking my emails and I see an email come across from PlayStation that like the purchase went through and I'm like, okay. So I'm like, and I logged out and logged back in on a web browser to like try it a second time to add the stuff to the cart to see if it was just a glitch and it still had an issue. And then I logged out 
log back in it was going to try and do it a third time and i could see there was a price tag for the games to add right. to my cart and then i get an email later saying that it actually like you know it went through it i'm like that's what they need to clean up like they yeah. need like and then um like xbox live always did a good job of updating their store relatively quickly so like you know like there's a flash sale sometimes the flash sale loads right away sometimes you have to wait till saturday or sunday to load it up <laughs> see what you want to buy <laughs> and i'm talking on the system so right there's some there's some improvements that they could do there but then again they're playing from behind you know like like microsoft has set their standard and kept moving down the field while it while sony's been like oh wow during the playstation 4 life cycle they're like we're really trying to clean up our online presence and our online network which i will you know i've heard is a huge a significant improvement over the playstation 3 it's just they still have a way to go to even be like you can look at the two and you can't tell a difference you know between the quality of their services yeah Yeah, but that's my first one how about you um I would like to see Sony really try to uh, either bring back a franchise or make a new one that's like kind of has like a competitive multiplayer edge to it. Like PS2, so PS, yeah, I, that's what I was going to bring up. <coughs> PS2 oh, was so known, so known for SOCOM. And like, I would love <coughs> them to like just bring it back as like either a free to play game or like, you know, maybe like a 20 or 30 dollar price tag and then i know we have the discussion about loot boxes and stuff but like you know have like cosmetic stuff that you can buy for your characters like kind of like like you know what would be perfect actually for socom if microsoft is getting PUBG and that remains exclusive sony could totally rip off PUBG and make like a socom something with PUBG, like like a similar battle royale style thing where like you can either squat up or you can do it solo or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you go in and, you know, each game is different based on the loot that you find within the game. But as you progress, you get loot boxes, you get new outfits, new hats, new shirts or whatever. And you can go in and customize the character the way you want it to look or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I think that would be really cool if Sony brought back SOCOM in that style because, you know, that's that style game looks like it's not going away anytime soon you know fortnite's doing it grand theft auto did a version of it you know ubisoft already said they're coming out and going to do a, a version of it uh man what a great idea wow socom battle royale style game i mean it doesn't even need to be socom but like so it's socom, socom has such a a lot of people have a lot of fondness for socom and socom 4 kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way plus it came out <laughs> Like what? A, two weeks before the PlayStation Three outage or whatever, the mm-hmm. network outage. So like, it killed it. Probably. I know it did. It did. <laughs> it did kill it because like <laughs> that. Because it, I mean, they had a campaign, but it was not great. And then if your network's out for six months, you can't play a <laughs> multiplayer game. So yeah, but uh, that's but I, I wish they would bring bring back a kind of like a competitive focus game not that like uncharted multiplayer or last of us or uh kill zones multiplayer aren't good but like for them to focus on a on a franchise that hasn't been around for a while would be cool yeah none of this got a war multiplayer stuff though from ascension oh that was awful it was such a bad idea i think um and if i had to pick something that nintendo does better than sony off the top of my head I'd like to see them dive back into like a 30, 3D Explorer game. I know we've got Knack and all that, but I mean like something, you know, maybe a new IP, but something where they put like a real effort into it. Let the, let come up with, you know, Shuhei goes out there and picks a team of like 20 people and they go off and they just have three, four years, five years to develop a, a 3D platformer and try and come up with a mascot. That's the thing. Like Sony doesn't have really necessarily have a mascot. I mean, they have uncharted, 
you know, like Uncharted yeah. is kind of. They don't really have that kid friendly mm-hmm. mascot like Crash See, used to be yes. or Jack yeah. used to be. Like, yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, now it's like, now, you know, I mean, he's more for the grown ups. Uncharted is more for the grown ups. So they need something that is, like you said, kind of kind of kid friendly, but also adults like want to play and have a lot of fun with it. You know, so that that's what I think they they need that that um that Nintendo does really well. Yeah, I think I mean, did Ratchet sell well? The the new one, the newest one, did it sell well? I mean, it seemed to be liked by everybody that I talked to that played it. But um, I mean, I, like, I feel it. like they were trying to do that with the movie tie-in and everything. I thought I thought the uh, I thought it did really well. And, but like and, I don't know, man. I, I I mean I agree with you. I think they need like a. They don't have. They have a decent roster of mascots now. I mean, like you know, Kratos is kind of making a comeback, and Aloy and Drake and Joel and Ellie, I guess. But like none of them are Ratchet or Sly or Jack or Crash. You know. Yeah. So. Uh... I don't have any sales numbers, but there, there it is. See, that might be it. Like, and not get maybe what they need to do is like trim it down. Because from what I hear, the the Cl- Ratchet and Clank games could get ridiculous, like in the in the sequels and stuff. But not just narrow the focus a little bit. Keep the gameplay great. Maybe add a new one or two new guns every game, or add a new mechanic. You know, you don't have to go like all out and go crazy, but maybe they are doing it there. I totally forgot about Ratchet and Clank when I was thinking about that answer. So they could totally do that with Ratchet and Clank. Cultivate that. Mm-hmm. Take the time. Really work with uh, Insomniac and and hell, maybe even buy them and be like, yeah, I don't know why they don't just buy an Insomniac. Like, like you, you make Ratchet and Clank, and you could do. Like on you know off years, you guys are gonna have a small team that does like a game you know where people can go to that team and be like, you know, well I'm tired of making Ratchet and Clank. I made the last two. I want to work on something new. They can join that team. Someone rotates out. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, have yeah. a smaller team. That Similar to what special- Naughty Dog did with like yeah. okay, so Uncharted. Some of the team was kind of tired of Uncharted. But they made so they formed a second team. To work, you know, one team will work on The Last of Us, one team will work on Uncharted. And, like, that kind of seems to be what they're doing now, where, like, okay, so they brought the whole team together to finish Uncharted 4, but now they're split off again, where one team did Lost Legacy and the other team's working on Last of Us 2 style thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I really, about- <laughs> I really want a new Jack and Daxter game. Like that, that would be not, cool. Like the first one, not what they did with two and three, which they were they were good, but like one was was like that pure platforming uh, game where like you really only just jumped on things and collected things. Like there was no weird weapons. There's no vehicle driving. It was just kind of like their version of Mario sixty four or something, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. But let's see. For me, this kind of tied into the third question. Uh, but I'm just going to use it as my thing. Uh, I wish Sony would kind of start differentiating their IP. You know, they're all kind of either a semi-open world or fully open world, over-the-shoulder, third-person action game with light RPG elements, you know? Yeah. Not, not, yeah. That, I, not that I don't like those <clears throat> games, because... You know, Uncharted. Uncharted is is a really good game, despite some of the gameplay issues I had with it. Uh, Horizon, man, still fighting Zelda for that game of the year spot for me. I'm I still know what I'm going to pick when we start talking about that stuff. Horizon is so good, uh, but you look at God of War and uh, Days Gone and Last of Us Two. You know, some of these games are starting to look pretty similar in terms of like <laughs> the way they look and, and how you're going to play these games. Yeah. Like, like, um, days gone, especially sad. Yeah. Yeah. It like, looks like the last of us mm-hmm. kind of looks like it might play like uncharted, you know, or even mm-hmm. the last of us. It's just, I, yeah, that that's a good point. I think they do need to start differentiating their IPs. I think 
they need more, like you said, kid friendly IPs. Mm-hmm. You know, because then they could take they could take a huge slice out of Nintendo. Not they may not like take many well, what, slices what would out happen? of it, but they, what would happen? What would happen is like people wouldn't feel the need to buy a, a Switch or a 3DS right. for their kid because they right. already have a PS4. So they're like, oh, well, I don't need to buy another console. I can just buy, you know, Knack or, or you know, Sly Cooper if they ever made another one of those or something. Yeah, Spyro the Dragon. You know, stuff like that that was competing with Nintendo. They kind of got away from that because then they were competing with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, well, you're back to competing with Nintendo. So expand your portfolio like I, I i totally agree with you because when people people ask me hey you know what game system should i buy and it's like well do you have kids and it's like yes well ultimately if you have the budget buy a ps4 and a nintendo system because the kids will get more out of the nintendo system than they will the ps4 but you'll love the ps4 because you're playing like star wars battlefront 2 which is what next couple of weeks or is that no that's early november it's november 14th or something okay so it's it's a it's it's about a month it's off but still yeah but still it's relatively soon so you know that's that that's what they do need i agree with you on that that's mm-hmm. a you know like differentiating their ips but also kind of bringing in some kin friendly stuff yeah so. i mean i think i think you know microsoft whatever is kind of in the same position where like their ip is a little bit more differentiated where like halo's first person shooter and gears is third person shooter and then you know fable if they ever decide to bring back a proper fable is kind of like an open world rpg style thing and then super lucky's tales i think is their platformer that's coming out like they do a little bit better job but you know they're still stuck competing with playstation so they're still pushing gears and halo up against you know whatever sony has to where like that's why nintendo isn't a direct threat to anybody <laughs> because all their ips are well most of them are kid friendly when and they yeah. they provide something different for people and i i think you know sony and microsoft both should look at nintendo because they both have they both own ip that are kid friendly you know microsoft has banjo kazooie uh you know they they have what else do they have they there's something else I was thinking of just earlier today uh, like Battletoads even uh, you know and it's, Sony has Sly Jack and Ratchet and Knack yeah. Yeah. you know bring those back man yeah. and and here's here's the thing this is this is the other thing that it doesn't need to be like photorealistic like a horizon zero dawn is give it kind of a polished cartoonish look you don't need graphics like your eyes don't need to bleed from looking at the beautiful graphics like and i'm not saying that like you look at mario odyssey and i'm not saying that's an ugly game i'm just saying they have a focus of gameplay there and i mean to be honest gameplay is king with with mario games so like you can you don't so then there's a way where you can cut back on your budget a little bit focus on the gameplay make the graphics look good they don't have to look the best but i mean you know they they kind of did a really good job with ratchet and clank it looks really good Mm -hmm. and it plays really well so it's almost like they can if you continue down that path they can rebuild their kid-friendly things because i think uh captain canada's letting his son play ratchet and clank now or he has played Ratchet and Clank, and like that—that's awesome. But that gives it gives him something else to play other than Mario, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. or like even like Little Big Planet too. Like I always forget Little Big Planet ex- exists. Sackboy is so kid friendly, you know. And like I don't know, it, maybe like the building mechanics are too complicated, but the campaigns in Little Big Planet are easy enough for kids to understand and and try to do different things in it, you know? And so, yeah, yeah, I don't know. And, and they could even move little big planet to the next level too, because of Mario maker, like, you know, those games out there still provide something for certain people. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe revisit all stars, like, uh, you know, battle Royale or whatever, like change it up a little bit, 
You know, I like Battle Royale. What PlayStation All Stars wasn't a bad idea. I just feel like I feel like Sony's library is stronger now than it was when that game came out. That I feel like that game would do better now if they revisited it. Yeah, you yeah. know, you know, with with Aloy and and you know Kratos and and uh, the character from Infamous Second Son and even Cole um, Delson. I was his name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and and the order, like you know, bring those characters in. Like I feel like you could have a. I don't. I don't know how you would do that, man. But there, there's so many different things that Sony can do to attract the attention of people who want to give something to their kids or just have a different experience. Uh, so that's that's kind of where my mind went. Was like I just want them to differentiate stuff a little bit uh, because as much as I I love playing Sony's games, like they they are starting to feel samey. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, but. Uh, but I think that's I think that's all the questions we're going to answer this time. I have a few more. Maybe we'll save them for next week on on the the full show. But we should we should kind of work that in. I think yeah. that would be cool to work it in. Get some like one or two listener questions in. Yeah. a show like, or like <laughs> ask instead of like questions. Like maybe one of our topics can be from the community or something. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah, yeah I mean, I've, been, I've been trying like, to get that. have them have them throw both at us. Be like, throw us your, your questions and your topics, and we could just rotate and pick, you know, what we want, and maybe do like, what are you playing? And then after, what are you playing? Kind of do that, and then roll right into top, you know, rough topic of the show. And then yeah. twenty questions. Tw- and now that twenty questions is faster, yeah. I mean, we'll be, you know, we could we could you know keep it at an hour, you know, an hour and a half, you know, or right. something. Yeah. So, yeah. But. Anyways, I think that'd be I think that'd be great to work in for the community. I like that idea, so I think that'd yeah. be good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save up. A, I'm gonna ask for stuff this week. So uh, look for the posts in our Facebook group and uh, or on Twitter or wherever. Email us ngrradiopodcast at gmail dot com if you have a topic. So, uh, but yeah, this has been a uh, Nerds Gone Rogue Fireside Chat with uh, Corey Moose. Moose, where can we find you? You can find me at uh, Sven, S-V-H-E-N-N, on Twitter, Instagram, and PSN. Also, you can find me every, it goes up Thursday, I think, every Thursday on Nerds Gone Platinum with my co-host Jason and now Jeff, who is our permanent third chair. Uh, We record every, yeah, we record every Tuesday night, and that usually goes up on Thursdays, uh, where we talk about playstation obviously if you want to tweet us it's ng underscore platinum you could also email us questions comments and concerns to nerds gone platinum at gmail.com so yeah that's yeah. where you can find us where can we find you Corey? uh you can find me at Corey and hd on instagram and twitch i'm we're starting to or my rate team's going to start doing some destiny stuff so that's going to be cool uh nice. you can find me on twitter at Corey and uhd you can find me on Nintendo Power Block that I do with Edward Varnell. You can email that show at nintendopowerblock at gmail.com because we do answer a lot of questions on that show. Basically the same thing as Nerds Got Platinum, but it's all Nintendo related. So, uh, And we also have a bunch of other shows, uh, so check them out. I'm not going to name them all because there's too many st- people involved and in, in stuff like that. But uh, Nerds Got Rogue YouTube page, like, subscribe, and share. Check out our videos. Uh, check out the Nintendo Power Block episode because Ed visited, and so we did a really cool episode where we kind of integrated the games we were playing, the gameplay of those games into the episode. Nice. Uh, so that episode turned out really cool. Not as clean as I would have liked it to, but I was trying to <laughs> rush it out and make sure it got up on time. So, uh, but it was it was still a really fun episode to do. So uh, check that out. There's Octopath Traveler. Uh, FIFA footage, Metroid footage, uh, Zelda stuff. So uh, check it out. And if you're listening on an, on a podcast service, rate us, comment, helps with discoverability, all that good stuff. Visit ngrradio.com for all of our stuff. Moose, this was fun. Yeah, we should do it so. again. I mean, 
Yeah. You know, well, we'll we'll tell Matt we don't need you this week. We're good. We got yeah. some things to talk about. Matt, we're good. We don't need you. We don't need you. I'm just saying, Matt, we love you. We're kidding. We, want we you love back. you. We do we need want you. Back. Yeah. We want you back. Yeah. We want to do some 20 questions. I'm getting antsy, man. I know. I was actually thinking about that today. I was like, man, we haven't done that in a while. And I'm like, I could go for that again. And I, I and yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. So Yeah. Yeah. So Anyways, I still owe Matt from season one of 20 questions. I still owe him that $20 gift card. I need to get it to him as soon as I get paid because I just keep forgetting. Um, yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us this week. And until next week, we're out. Yeah. Peace.